The live pre-flight feature in InDesign is constantly checking your document for common errors so you can avoid potential problems during output. Let's take a look at some of the options that are available with this feature. Now I'm beginning this video with the preflight.indd file already open and when you're opening this file if you get a message about missing links just go ahead and click OK because we're going to take care of those in this video. Now way down here at the bottom of our document you're going to notice that we have a little section that displays our preflight status and in my document I currently have three errors in the document. Now you may be wondering what that is. Well this is the live preflight status that is always running in the background checking your document for common errors. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's finding. I'm going to go ahead and double click where it says three errors and that's going to open up my preflight panel. Now we can see that it's finding uh, one link problem and two text problems. And if you click on these triangles to open up the disclosure here you can see we have two frames that have overset text and if we open that up it's going to tell me which text frames have the overset text. We can actually click on the number, this is the page number, and that will jump to the frame in question. Now we should also point out that this is using what's called the basic profile. There's always a profile running that is controlling exactly what InDesign is going to search for. So let's take a closer look at that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the panel menu here and I'm going to go to define profiles. And you can see that in this section here we're utilizing the basic profile. There's also a digital publishing profile if you're creating content for tablet devices and sorts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own profile. So down here I'm going to click the plus sign and we're going to create a new profile called LBV preflight. And then within this profile, we can go ahead and define all of the changes or all the things that we want to look for. So I'm just going to close this for now. So in the general section, we can put a little description of what this is going to do. We can go to the links panel and you can see that by default it's checking for links, whether they're missing or modified, and inaccessible URL links. Now I'm going to go down to the color section because this is a useful area because we can check for anything where transparency blend space is required. We can also choose to define which color spaces and modes are not allowed. So maybe in certain situations you want InDesign to check for RGB images or spot color images or even grayscale images. Now I'm going to leave that go for now but what we may want to do is under spot color setup we could turn this on and say that the maximum number of spot colors allowed is say one. So I'll turn that off for now. Where I'd really like to go, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we'll go to images and objects. We can check our images for a minimum resolution. So you can see our color minimum resolution right now is 250. Maybe we want that to be 300. In addition, we can come down here and if there's any minimum stroke weight, so this is usually a big one for print output, we could turn that on and say that the minimum stroke weight is going to be, let's set that to a quarter point, so 0.25 points. And you'll see that there's a bunch of other options that are available in here. In the text category, we're by default looking for overset text and missing fonts. We can also check for paragraph and character style overrides, non-proportional scaling of type, that's a great one in case you want to make sure that there's no horizontal or vertical scaling applied. And minimum type size. In certain sectors, different industries will have a minimum type size that they're allowed to use, say for example six points in certain industries. So the point here is that I can define exactly what I want InDesign to look for. So once I've created my profile I'll go ahead and click on Save and then I'll go ahead and click OK. Now the thing is just by creating that profile is not going to guarantee that I'm checking my document with that profile. You can see that right now the profile is set to the basic profile. 
So I can click on this drop down and I can choose the new profile I just created. And we can see that we have a couple of additional things that are showing up in here. Now, in addition, I want to point out that if you go to the panel menu and go to pre flight options, you can define what your working profile is going to be. So even though we created the LBV pre flight profile, if you always want your documents to be checked using that profile, you might want to choose that from the drop down so that's your working profile. Also, you have the ability to embed profiles. So you can control what happens when InDesign opens up a document with an embedded profile. So typically you want it to use the embedded profile, but you do have the option to change that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK, because the other thing I want to point out is that when you are choosing a profile, right now we're using the LBV preflight profile, we can in fact click this button to embed the profile into this document. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're working in a collaborative environment where you have other users who are going to be working on this document, you would have to make sure that they have the LBV preflight profile installed on their machine. And that's easy enough to do as well. You just go to the panel menu, go to define profiles, and you can go ahead and export specific profiles by clicking on this button right here. And then when you go to the other machine, you can load that profile from the exported file. But when you embed a profile, that means that that embedded profile is always going to move along with this document. So that's a helpful tool for ensuring that everybody has access to that same profile. So let's try to fix some of these issues. I'm going to start with this links category. We'll open up the missing link and I'm going to click on this button to go to the link in question. Well, this is linking to an image that has been renamed. So if I go to the links panel, this is already highlighted. I can click the relink button and I'm going to relink it to 0192 rev. And when I choose open, that's going to link it to that image and that error is going to go away. In addition, if I go to images and objects, you can see that I have some images that have a insufficient resolution. And there's not much I can do about that right now, but it's something you may want to pay attention to. You could click on that image. And if you look at the bottom of the links panel, it'll show you what the current effective resolution is. So you can see this is at 172 pixels per inch and you can make a call whether you want to use that image or if you need a higher resolution version. Now up here we also have a stroke weight too small and if I click on that link there it's going to highlight the stroke that is too small and you can see the stroke here is 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down here and set it to three quarters of a point. You can see when I do that that error goes away. Let's click on this one. Same thing here, we'll set that one to three quarters of a point. And now those errors have disappeared. How about these text frames? Click on the link here. We can see that the text frame is overset. I'm just going to open that up to give it a little bit more breathing room. Click on this text frame, open this up. And you can see these errors disappear as we start going through here. If I open up this panel here, we've got some text where we have some very, very small text and you can click on these different instances where you have this tiny text that's inside of your document. This may be acceptable, it may not, but it's in this area right up here. So we can see that this text is five points in size. So if we wanted to, we could increase that text and as I do, those errors are going to start to go away. Now we have a minimum point size of six points for these items. And now we no longer have those problems. Now we can go to these other ones. We have some other situations where we can fix. But the point of the pre-flight profiles and the live pre-flight feature is that it's always checking your document and making sure that common errors in your document will be caught. This allows you to fix them before they become a more serious problem.